Why hello there beautiful people and welcome back to the Buffalo Dynasty here on NCAA Football 07 and I know it's been a while since I uploaded episode number one but we're finally back with this series and ready to get it underway and in our first game of the season we'll be hosting the Temple Owls who are slated to be the worst team in college football but that being said we're not much better than they are so this game really could go either way but let's get right into it. So Temple's going to start off with the football here, and here's senior running back Tim Brown just running all over us just to start this game. He gets the first down on the first play. Now here's Brown running to the right side. This time, Kareem Beerum's going to put him down in the backfield. That leads to a second and 11. Sophomore quarterback Shane Kelly is going to throw a dot left side. He finds the slot receiver Bruce Francis, the sophomore. He'll get the first down, and they're in Buffalo territory. So now here's Tim Brown once again. He's just stiff-arming our defenders now, and he gets inside the 25 for the Owls. First and 10. Here's a pitch right side. Brown gets around once again, and he's going to be tackled just short of the first down marker. Good job by Gerald Jackson. So now Harper comes in to relieve Brown. Kelly on the play fake throws right side, and Hendy somehow gets a foot in bounds. I wasn't quite sure about that, but they're going to give him the first. As Brown on the swing pass is tackled by Beerum for a loss. Second and goal, handoff to Brown, and he barely got anything. Good play by Robinson. That'll lead to a third down. Pitch left side to Brown. This time he's going to get the blocking, and he's going to get the score. As Temple strikes first blood, they're up 7-0. So now we get to see the Buffalo offense for the first time, led by sophomore quarterback Drew Willie. He's going to throw a dot right over the middle. That's Brett the Hitman Hamlin with the catch. And we are now close to midfield, actually past it. Now, Jared Patterson gets the handoff. He is only going to get a yard if that. It's really no gain as Willie steps up in the pocket, throws deep over the middle. He's going to find the tight end, Chad Upshaw, who stiff arms the defender. He's going to get inside the five-yard line for the Bulls. So our first offensive drive is looking pretty good so far. Here's Willie looking for Wallace in the back of the end zone, but just overthrows him. So we're going to have to settle for three as Jerry McGrory is going to kick the field goal to make it a 7-3 ball game. So now we're going to look at some other action from around the country as number three Notre Dame is in the ATL to take on number 25 Georgia Tech and Brady Quinn with a big throw down the field. He is going to find DJ Horde for the touchdown as Notre Dame takes a 7-0 lead. Back to our game now. Temple is going to get the ball here as Kelly's blown up in the backfield. Andre Smith able to get back there for the sack. And now here's Kelly on third down, looking, throws over the middle, is going to be caught by Harris for the first down. Such a big letdown by the Buffalo defense there, but now it's third and six. Counterplay to Brown, he gets great blocking, runs into Jackson, but still picks up the first down up to the 35. So now first and 10. Another counterplay to Brown, he jukes outside, Brown with plenty of space. He's going to get tackled around the 20-yard line. And we just cannot stop Tim Brown from doing whatever he wants to do to this defense. We do this time, though, as that's Ramon Guzman on the big hit. And that'll lead to a third and seven. Under a minute to go here. Brown is just blown up in the backfield. Labano Akonjin on that tackle. And Temple will make the field goal to make it 10 to three. Now we have another studio update as Georgia Tech looks to respond to Notre Dame. Here's Reggie Ball. Standing in the pocket, he's going to be brought down for the sack, coughs it up, and it's going to be recovered by Notre Dame. Brockington on the recovery there, and then later on, Darius Walker will push his way into the end zone for the second touchdown of the game. And the Irish are up 14-0, that one could get ugly very quickly. We go back to our game, 32 seconds to go in the first quarter as Patterson's able to fight forward for a gain of four. Now third and six, Willie throws right side. That's going to be caught by Hamlin. He's just short of midfield, but he gets the first down and then some. Final play of the quarter. Here's Patterson up the middle. He's going to get the first down and more. And that's going to be how we end the first quarter. Temple leads 10 to three. So now second quarter action here, second and 10, handoff to Patterson, tries to get outside, but he is going to get dropped in the backfield for a loss. That'll lead to a third and 14. Here's Willie trying to make something happen, rolls to his right, and he's going to throw last second, and that was just an awful throw. It's going to be picked off by Michael Loveland. He's going to get into Buffalo territory with Patterson making a potentially touchdown saving tackle. 
As we go back to Atlanta, where Notre Dame is extending their lead here. Brady Quinn with a deep shot to Jeff Samarja, and he's going to run all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Notre Dame's up 21 to nothing now. It ain't looking good for the Yellow Jackets at all. So back to Buffalo now as Temple has the football here. Here's the pitch out to Brown. Brown spins inside, finds some space, breaks a tackle, and he is going to be tackled just short of the 25-yard line, but still a great gain. He's having a great game up to this point. Hand off to Brown again. He's going to get another first down inside the 15. We're just having no success stopping him here. Now it's a third and six. Kelly fakes it to Brown this time, throws it to the back of the end zone. Francis catches it, but he can't get a foot in bounds. And Temple will kick another field goal to make it 13 to three. So now we get the football back with 434 left in the half. Hand off to Patterson. He probably should have just stayed inside. That's on me. That's user right there. Azabuki makes the tackle there. Now here's Willie under pressure. He just runs back. That's a terrible decision. That's just terrible user play as well. So now we're faced with a third and 30. So I'm just going to try to avoid a safety here as Willie throws it right side and that's going to head out of bounds. We go three and out and now Temple's looking to make it a three score game and off to Brown. He gets around the right side again, breaks the tackle. He gets face masks and actually costs the football up and they don't call it. Robinson dives on it. So we get some life thanks to that no call. Three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Willie will drop back. Rolls to his right. He has so much space in front of him. He's going to take it. He ain't the fastest quarterback in the world, but he definitely can make some moves when he needs to. And those moves gave us a first down. So now Willie steps up, tries to throw it, and he's going to be brought down for the sack. That's Azabuki who gets the sack there. And that leads to a second and 18. We're going to run the option here. Willie pitches out to Patterson. And that is just blown up. We just really can't seem to get anything going here offensively. Now it's going to be third and long. Willie's looking down the field, throws off his back foot, and somehow finds Terrence Bro for the first down. I mean, I guess it takes a play like that to really get things going here, as Patterson's going to carry it on the very next play. Still forms a defender, and he's going to be tackled just short of the first down marker. We got a minute and a half to go, third and three. Willie looking left side and just completely overthrows Upshaw there. So I decided to kick a field goal and just take the points to make it a one score game. And McGrody's gonna miss this one wide right. Now I did turn down the field goal accuracy slider to 40%. So maybe that played a role in the miss, but that's just still a bad miss. As here's Kelly. Shaking off a sack attempt, throws it deep, and he's going to be picked off by Andre Evans, our sophomore cornerback. And that is a huge play with a minute to go here in the first half as we get another studio update. This time from Cal at Tennessee. Here's Joe Ayub throwing the swing pass to Marshawn Lynch. He stiff arms a defender, and he's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown as the Bears take a 10-3 lead with two minutes to go in the second quarter. So back to our game. Second down. Here's Willie. Throws right side. And that's just not a good throw. He's picked off. Walter Mabane gets the pick. And he gets up to the 24-yard line. And right after we get a pick, we give it right back to Temple. So now the Owls are looking to put us out of our misery here. Hand off to Neil, the fullback. He breaks a tackle. And Neil is going to get inside the 10 up to about the 6-yard line. And they're going to burn a timeout with 51 seconds to go. First and goal. Kelly throws off his back foot, caught by Hamilton. He gets away from our defense and he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. So it's a 17 point lead for Temple now. It ain't looking very good for us to say the very least. And now here's Willie throwing right side, finds Watson. We have all three timeouts from what I remember. So we could get down the field and at least get a field goal. But unfortunately, we're going to get hit there and then we're going to get hit with a holding call by Coughlin. So now with 10 seconds to go. We're just going to run it here with Patterson and try to get to the half. Patterson actually gets a pretty good run, so now we have a chance to possibly yeet it. And we are going to throw the Hail Mary here, but Willie's going to be brought down for the sack, which is technically a turnover on downs, but the half ends. And we're down 20-3 to against the team that's supposedly going to be the worst team in college football. So now we're going to get a little studio update for the games that we're watching currently. There is a pick by Georgia Tech, so they still have some kind of life here. And now two minutes to go, here's Ball. Throwing, he's gonna be picked off, that's Tom Zibikowski. 
He gets across the 50. 224 to go in the second quarter. Notre Dame is just dominating Georgia Tech. And in Cal versus Tennessee, the Golden Bears are still up 10 to 3 as we come out of halftime. So now we have the football to begin the second half. Willie throws up in the middle. That's going to be Upshaw who comes up with the grab. And it's another first down. Willie had a rough first half, and he's looking to turn it up here in the second half. He'll drop back. He rolls to his right. And just dumps it off to Patterson. He'll pick up the first down up to the 46-yard line. So now first and 10. Here's Willie again. Looking right side. And I guess he was throwing that to the Gatorade handler on the sideline. Maybe he was looking for Gengar or something like that. But didn't work out there. But this one's going to work out as he finds Upshaw, who's been the most reliable receiver on this team. Even being the tight end, he's up to the 31-yard line. Now first and 10. Willie rolls to his left. Facing some pressure. And he's going to just throw it, and that was a bad decision. Azabuki, who's been all over the field for Temple, gets the pick. And that is now three interceptions in the game for Willie. His day might be done. But now we're back to the Tim Brown show as Brown just runs over Kareem Beerum and picks up another first down. And Beerum's supposed to be our best defensive player, too, so if he can't bring this guy down, we're in some trouble. Third and four, they give it to Neal, and he's going to pick up the first down. So in general, we just can't stop the run to save our lives. 163 rushing yards to 14 in favor of Temple. But here's the play fake. Kelly going to be brought down for the sack. So we get some good to happen to us at very least. Second and 17 now. Empty back set. Here's Kelly throwing over the middle. It's caught by Harris, and he gets a good chunk of yards back. That'll make it to third and eight. They're five for eight on third downs here in the game. Kelly throws offside, and that's going to be broken up and complete. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They're really going for the jugular here as Kelly drops back, throws over the middle. That's going to be picked off. Jesse Imes with a big pick, and we have some life once again. So we go back to Tennessee for a studio update, and here's Marshawn Lynch going beast mode before he was known as beast mode. He's going to run for a 76-yard touchdown as Cal goes up 20-3. to at the beginning of the third quarter. Going over to Atlanta. Here's Brady Quinn throwing left side. He's going to find Horde once again for his second touchdown of the game. Notre Dame up 28 to nothing at the half. It ain't looking very good for the Yellow Jackets, like I said. Senior quarterback Stuart Samsel's in the game now, replacing Willie as Patterson gets a big run there. There's Samsel throwing right side. He's going to find Brett the Hitman Hamlin for a big gain up to the 25-yard line. First and 10 now. Samsel's going to hand it off to Patterson on the counter, and Patterson with plenty of space. He'll get up to about the 11 yard line. First and 10. Another handoff to Patterson. He tries to bounce it outside. That's not a good idea at all. And sure enough, he gets put down for a two yard loss. Samsel's going to step up, tries to scramble. He gets up to the five. Still pretty dangerous, though. Third and five. Samsel rolls to his right. And he's going to find a wide open Evan Wallace in the back of the end zone for the Buffalo touchdown, our first of the season. And we cut our deficit down to 10. So now we have more shenanigans down in Atlanta as we begin the second half. Brady Quinn goes right side. He's going to find Raymond McKnight. He feels like he's been left out of the scoring here, and he's going to get a touchdown of his own as the Irish are up 35 to nothing, just completely embarrassing the Yellow Jackets on their home field. Third and seven. Kelly throws offside to nobody in particular, maybe looking for mischievous there, as we'll get the football back. Second and six, handoff to Patterson. He breaks through, and he's able to get the first down, as he's running pretty well. Not as well as Tim Brown, but still running pretty well, as Samsel drops back here. And this is one of those plays where I really just got to smack myself in the face a couple times, because I had Evan Wallace wide open, but instead I threw it right side, and Loveland gets his second pick of the game. That is just not smart by me at all, but it happens. As here's Tim Brown just powering forward. He picks up a solid chunk of yards, eight to be exact. Now it's a third and two. Play fake left side. That's going to be caught by McGrath, who gets across midfield for the first. So now, last few seconds of the third quarter. Here's a handoff to Neal. He's trying to get the first. He's going to cough it up, though, and it's going to be picked up by Andre Smith. And once again, we have some life here. Final play of the third quarter. Here's a handoff to Patterson on the counter. He gets a block. Patterson's going to get the first down up to about the 41-yard line, and that's where we'll leave it. Heading into the fourth quarter, it's 20-10. to 10. 
So now we'll look to finish off the comeback here. Here's Samson on the play fake. He tries to throw it, but he just didn't get rid of it in time. Azabuki is having a huge game. Seven tackles, two sacks, and a pick so far. As Samson throws this one up, Watson comes up with it. And he's going to get up to about the 14-yard line. Huge play. Now it's going to be a third and five. Samson looks right side and throws that to Haunter this time, actually. It's going to be incomplete. McGrory is going to come back out, and this time he makes the field goal to make it 20 to 13. So still anybody's game. We still got a shot at it, but we need a defensive stop here as we go to another studio update. And Notre Dame's looking to pour it on some more as here's another throw. And what a catch by Horde. Good Lord. 42 to nothing. Notre Dame is for real. But now here's Temple. They're going to throw right side. That's nearly picked off by Beerum, and we really could have used that because it probably wouldn't have been a pick six. But instead, we get the ball back after a punt. Now here's Samson rolling left. He's going to throw underneath the Patterson, and Patterson gets a solid game before being pushed out. Third and seven now. Pretty big third and seven for the time left in the game. Samson drops back, lets it fly over the middle, and it's nearly caught by Bro. He just couldn't come down with it. And we're going to go for it here on fourth and seven because, honestly, I don't know that I trust my defense to make a stop here. And it doesn't really matter because that was a putrid throw. We turned it over on Towns. And now here's Tim Brown. Big run runs over Evans. He's going to get inside the 20. Breaks a couple more tackles, but it's coming back on a clip. So we get absolutely blessed by Hamilton. Thank you so much, my friend. Still a first down regardless. Here's a handoff to Brown. He breaks the tackle, gets a couple more yards. That leads to a second and six. Pitch left side to Brown. He's blown up in the backfield this time. And that's going to lead to a third and nine. Kelly going to throw it this time. Throws left side, and that's going to get dropped, essentially, off the back of his receiver. And now they're going to try a field goal to make it 23 to 13. Put the game out of reach, but a Akonjan comes through and blocks the field goal attempt. And that is absolutely huge. We still have a shot at it. Here's Patterson on the handoff. He gets the first down, and he's going to get pushed out at the 49. So now it's a new set of downs. We're at the 49-yard line. Pitch out to Patterson. He gets a nice block down the field, and he jukes the defender, at least momentarily. Does it enough to get the first down, so I'll take it. Clock's still ticking, though. And we're still running it as Patterson gets pushed out of bounds. So that stops the clock there. And now it's going to be third and six after a short loss. As Samson throws in, that's going to be incomplete. Looking for Upshaw. Honestly, I think that should have been DPI, but oh well. Samson's going to throw it last second. It's going to be caught by Evan Wallace, who just barely picks up the first down there. But our drive continues. McDuffie's in the game now. He gets the handoff on this counter. And McDuffie... Kind of deked out a defender, just a little, little back step and picks up the first. So we're at the 17-yard line. Third and nine out at the 16. Samsel throws over the left side. That's tipped in the air and complete. Just not a good throw by him. And I decide we're going to leave it up to our defense. We're going to kick a field goal so that when we get the ball back, assuming we get a stop here, then maybe we'll end up doing something. But surprisingly enough, we have another studio update from Atlanta. Notre Dame's not done scoring. Here's Rayshon McNeil on the return. He runs right through the middle of the Georgia Tech coverage team, and he's going to take this back for a huge 60-yard punt return. Notre Dame up 49 to nothing early in the fourth quarter. So now we have to find a way to stop Tim Brown, and maybe popping out the football might be a good idea, but you know, part of that idea is recovering the football, which we failed to do. So now here's another handoff to Brown. Brown breaks a tackle, and he's going to get tackled forward by Imes for the first down. Now it's third and eight. We stop the clock here, and Kelly's going to get blown up in the backfield for the sack. That is absolutely huge for us as we get the ball back with 122 to go. Here's Samsel. Throws right side. That's completely off target. Should have been picked off. Now it's going to be second and ten. Samsel under pressure immediately. And he's going to throw it deep looking for Wallace, and he just overthrew him. That's going to lead to a third and ten. Samsel rolls to his left and throws last second, and that honestly should have been picked off. Samsel's really crapping the bed here. Last chance for us here as Samsel steps up, throws right side. That's tipped away, and four incompletions is going to be how we end this game. 
we lose 20 to 16 and that's just an embarrassing way to lose a game regardless of anything as temple comes into our trap and takes it over and gets the w but them's the breaks drew willie probably will start next week as samsel didn't really do a whole lot to really impress me he went 9 to 23 174 yards three picks and was sacked three times Jarrett patterson 118 yards on the ground 17 yards receiving wise tim brown 163 and a touchdown on 33 carries as we dropped to 0 one to begin the season looking at the other scores cal absolutely embarrassed tennessee 33 to 3 was the final there marshawn lynch 245 yards and a touchdown on the ground and a receiving touchdown. He did fumble three times, but overall a great game for him outside of the fumbles. And Notre Dame did end up winning 49 to nothing against Georgia Tech. Brady Quinn went 24 of 32, 369, five touchdowns and a pick. And the Tribal Chief only had one tackle for Georgia Tech, so that's maybe why they ended up losing. So now I'm gonna show you guys highlights from the game of the week, which was my Florida State Seminoles taking on the dreaded Miami Hurricanes, number 12 versus number 11. And it started off really good for FSU as Lorenzo Booker is gonna book it and take it all the way to the casa. Can you dig it, sucker? 57 yard touchdown run. That puts the Noles up seven nothing. So now Miami looks to respond. Here's Kyle Wright. Looking down the field, and that's going to be picked off by Roger Williams as the Knowles come up with a big stop. And at this point, I'm hoping, you know what, Florida State might blow these guys out. Well, if only I were that lucky. Here's a big throw left side, a one-handed grab for the touchdown. That's Ryan Moore coming up with that one, and we're tied at seven. So now here's Drew Weatherford, probably one of my least favorite FSU quarterbacks of all time. But he's gonna find Lorenzo Booker and he's gonna run the rest of the way. The flag is a rough in the passer call in Miami and FSU takes a 14 to seven lead. But Miami ain't going like that. Here's a handoff to, I'm Tyrone Moss and I'm gonna F your defense long D style. He gets into the end zone for the touchdown and we're tied at 14. But Miami ain't done scoring there as here's right on the play fake. He's gonna roll right and he finds Greg Olson for the touchdown as the Hurricanes take their first lead of the game. It's 21 to 14, and this is looking like it's gonna be a good one. Third and three here as Miami looks to extend their lead. Wright's gonna be hit as he throws this one, and it's gonna be picked off. That is gonna be Myron Shake, Rattle, and Roll who picks that one off, the future Titan. And now Florida State has a chance to make something happen. Will we go to the fourth quarter now? Weatherford throws over the middle and he's gonna find Booker for the touchdown as FSU ties this one up at 21. So now Miami trying to get a two minute drill going here as Wright throws it deep. He's gonna be picked off by Roger Williams once again, his second pick of the game and Florida State has a chance to make something happen here. 39 seconds to go, here's Weatherford, lets it fly. It's gonna be caught by Dakota Efsler and he's gonna get into the end zone for the touchdown. Florida State takes a 28 to 21 lead. And yes, uh, F Slur is actually his name. It's just spelled with an extra G, which is why I'm not saying his actual name because I'm not trying to get, you know, in trouble. But Miami's going to answer right back. And here's, here's a big throw to Greg Olson. He's going to burn the FSU defense and he gets in for the score. It is 28 all, 80 yard dot to Olson. And we're getting some free football out in South Beach. So Florida State. Third and seven here. And I don't know if we're playing Mortal Kombat or not, but they got a guy named Baraka Atkins who's having a huge game for the Canes. That would lead to a field goal to make it 31 to 28 in the first OT period. And then a big dot right side is gonna give the Hurricanes the victory. Ryan Moore puts the Knolls out of their misery with a great route there. Nobody was even on him. And the Hurricanes end up winning this one 34 to 31. And just a huge game for Kyle Wright, 18-31, 268, four touchdowns and three picks. And a huge game for Lorenzo Booker, falls short. Weatherford had a good game as well, but unfortunately, the Canes get the W. So next up for FSU is Bowling Green, but before we get there, we're going to look at our in-season recruiting. There are a few guys that I'm looking for. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, the restriction I'm putting on myself for the first few years is that... For one, I'm only allowed to go after three stars in in-season recruiting. And then 
I can only go after players that align with the prestige that I have. So if I only have one star in prestige, I can only go after one star recruits in the off season. So that's really going to limit me. And overall, I'm only allowed to go after players who play in the states or provinces for that matter that border New York. So at least I get to get guys from Pennsylvania and New Jersey. There are a lot of recruits that come out of there and I can get players from Ontario or any other province that borders New York state in Canada. Our top 25 didn't change a whole lot. There weren't a lot of top 25 versus top 25 games outside of the three that I showed you guys. So the top 10 stays the exact same. Penn state moves up to 12. Cal moves up to 13. Georgia moves up to 15, FSU moves down to 17 from 12, and Georgia Tech is just completely not ranked anymore. Tennessee goes down to 24, and Oregon is now in the top 25. So Brady Quinn remains the number one player in the Heisman watch. Adrian Peterson's right behind him. Kind of had a pedestrian game against UAB, considering it's UAB, but it is what it is. Chris Leak is now number three after a big game against Southern Miss. And we actually have a defensive player up here now as well. We have Rufus Alexander from Oklahoma who had a huge game against UAB, unlike Adrian Peterson. He had a pick that ended up being a pick six. And then Brian Brom, four touchdowns against Kentucky. That's going to get him to stay in the top five. So like I mentioned, we're taking on Bowling Green. This is actually the first MAC game of the season for us. And we're pretty evenly matched for the most part. They are a C plus more a C. So we'll have to see how it goes. If you guys are enjoying this series, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section. If not, let me know down below what you would change. Do you guys think that I should include more Buffalo games in these videos? Should I do a more accelerated version of this series? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys soon.